Welcome to the Tech Today podcast powered by CEO Raider. It's your host, John Mayetta. I'm going to do some catch up here in real time. It's It's been a, a while since I've been on the podcast. And as I've said in the past, if you want to stay current with our content, the, the best way is really to subscribe to our newsletter. It's free. So if you just visit tek2day.com and sign up for the, the email notification, which is what I mean by the newsletter. And every time we publish, you know, you'll have it in your inbox. And the reason I say so is because we typically, not typically, we always put our most current thinking first in an article at Tech Today. It's just easier to get content out the door via a, a written article versus the podcast, which requires a, an enormous amount of time as it relates to editing and such. But one of the things we wrote about last week was technology companies who have CEOs who lack technology experience. And we highlighted Qualcomm. At that time, Qualcomm announced their new CEO, who is an engineer, as is their current CEO. And we contrasted uh, Qualcomm with Intel, who for the past couple of years has had Bob Swan, the company's former CFO, a lifetime, or rather a lifelong career CFO. I forget off of the top of my head how many CFO posts Bob Swan has had, but his adult life, he spent it as a CFO. And then you drop him in as CEO of a, of a chip company, and it should be no surprise that he's going to struggle as it relates to innovation. You know, CFO is not going to implicitly have a feel for where a particular market's going, whereas a lifelong engineer is going to have the ability to intuit where you know, where the market may be headed but before customers even have a, have a sense as to what they may want. And so today it was interesting. Intel announced that they're replacing Bob Swan with Pat Gelsinger, who's the, the CEO at uh, VMware. And Pat, I had a little bit of interaction, uh, indirect interaction with him uh, back in my banking days. He had a great reputation when he was a senior executive at, at EMC. I didn't cover EMC. One of my colleagues covered EMC. And then Pat became CEO in 2012 as part of that. If you remember the, the, the EMC Dell transaction and VMware got spun out and so on and so forth. And anyway, Pat's done a nice job running VMware. And prior to EMC, he was over at, at Intel and he was their first CTO. So he has, not only is he qualified, but he has experience in the industry, the chip industry, and he has experience at Intel, you know, from the inside. So he knows the company from the inside, the industry in general. So I think he'll do a fine job there. So it sounds like the the, the board was questioning Bob Swan's ability to lead Intel right around the time we were writing our article. And you know, th- this is a problem that's, I'd say it was more common during my banking days. So early 2000s through like 2010, 2011, even during my M&A days, very common for uh, people with sales experience to lead software companies and technology companies in general. That started a change, gosh, I want to say 2003, 2004, when you had uh, a bunch of CEO turnover related to backdating of stock options. So CEOs were first out, forced out of a number of technology companies. And some of those companies replaced the, the CEO with the CFO. And the thought being that, hey, the, the, the CFO is, I guess, more likely to pay attention to administrative detail, less likely to be aggressive as it relates to things like the backdating of options. They'll run a tighter ship in terms of, I guess, compliance is the best way to describe it. And we saw this further accelerate this trend of CFOs becoming CEOs during the 2008 downturn, whereby cost control and reducing OPEX became a, a key skill set. So that really accelerated acceptance, if you will, of CFOs becoming CEOs, the 0809 downturn, which lasted, you know, I don't think we really started to normalize until we hit 2011. And I think what, what's happening is software companies are, are no longer, it's, it's, it's a very different industry from 10, 15 years ago when you were selling prepackaged software, right? Now, now, it's, it's software as a service. It's, it's software that's delivered remotely over the cloud. The cloud, so in the case of Azure, uh, GCP, which is Google's cloud service, and AWS, these platforms are becoming increasingly sophisticated, and they, they bake in 
advanced analytic capability, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, things like this. These services are, are available through the cloud. So now you have people building applications on top of AWS, GCP, Azure. And, and so you could have a little startup with a couple million in funding that can bake in uh, advanced analytic capability into their apps by way of leveraging these cloud serv services. So you can leverage the core AI, core machine learning services uh, of AWS, Azure, GCP, and others in your application uh, right out of the box. And so what that means is, is software is becoming increasingly sophisticated. If you think about uh, phones, if you think about the, the, the clouds themselves, the data center, uh, the, the chip infrastructure in phones, in the data center, in, in video games, is becoming is becoming increasingly sophisticated. So it it really helps to have a CEO with technology chops, not just a sales type C CEO who can uh, recite the one pager from the product manager, but somebody who sort of knows this stuff in their bones, and somebody that has uh, you know intuition as to you know where the market's going. This stuff is all very fluid. I tell you, the only thing that, that, well, one of the certainties, not the only certainty, but one of the certainty is, certainties is that as these AI-based or advanced analytic-based services evolve and become increasingly sophisticated, uh, it's going to require more and more people, more and more people to, to tag the data, to teach the various machine learning powered models. Um, you know, you have quantum computing at the periphery. So, uh, you know, qualified people, Engineers, the bottom of the pyramid, are going to be engineers, data scientists are going to continue to be um, in demand, and these companies are going to continue to grow their their employee base, grow the number of data centers. The data centers are going to become increasingly sophisticated, and it's going to enable infrastructure companies, tool companies, i.e., Snowflake, and the application companies. Uh, as well as device manufacturers to uh, execute increasingly sophisticated operations as it relates to their software products, uh, their infrastructure products, their tools, their devices, and so forth. So I, I think the, 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 the CEO of, not of the future, but of, of, of the now, is going to be one who is well-versed in technology, who has engineering experience, and who can articulate not only the value prop to customers in the case of uh, an enterprise technology company, but articulate the, 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 the strategy and the more granular execution of that strategy to the employee base. The, the, the CEO that's going to uh, have success is one that has technology chops and can get the, mobilize the employee base uh, as it relates to being focused on the mission and having a sense of urgency as it relates to the mission. And I think, uh, just to put a bow on this, that's ultimately the sort of the decision that Intel uh, made in, in bringing on uh, Pat from VMware to, to lead Intel uh, for the foreseeable future. That's all for now. See you next time.